Stefan Castle's name is heating up. Not just in highlight reels, but in trade rumors too. Some fans are already packaging him off for a shot at pairing Giannis with a Wimby. Bold move, right? But before we toss Castle into the trade machine, let's do what Coach Pop would actually do. Pause, analyze, and look deeper. In this video, we'll take a data science approach to Castle's rookie year. Breaking down his game, measuring his consistency, comparing him to past rookies of the year, and maybe even uncovering who he could become in the future. So pull up a chair, put on your GM hat, and let's get into it. Caught a body, hit the rim, make it shake, boom. Step back, flex hard, they gon' clear the room. Post the rise, got them froze, yeah, they stuck like glue. Caught a body, caught a body, what you gonna do? Baseline cut, saw the lane, then I took flight. Left the earth, now they know it's gonna be a highlight Wrist cock back, crowd gas, yeah, it's game night Jumped out the gym, left defenders in the brake lights Sounds pass, spin move, ain't no hesitation Elevate quick, straight up levitation Body to body, yeah, that's intimidation Now they on the bench, rethinking situations What you're looking at here is a scatter plot of this year's rookie class with total minutes played on the Y axis and team win percentage on the X axis. Now this isn't about correlation, and we're not saying more minutes equals more wins. Instead, we're mapping two important context signals. How much trust a team places in a rookie via minutes, and whether that trust translates into team success. Take a look at Stefan Castle, top left of the losing side. He's logging serious minutes, but the Spurs just aren't stacking wins. That puts him in the heavy usage losing season quadrant. Now compare that with Jalen Wells. He's the standout in the top right. High minutes and team success. That's the dream zone for any rookie. Zachary, the Frenchman in Atlanta, also finds himself in a promising spot. Slightly lower minutes, but playing for a winning team. This chart helps us understand the ecosystem around each rookie who's earning floor time, and whether it's translating into wins. And Castle? He's clearly a centerpiece of San Antonio's long-term experiment. Now let's take a closer look at Stefan Castle's offensive game. In this scatter plot, we chart field goal attempts against field goal percentage, essentially mapping how much a rookie shoots versus how well they shoot. Castle finds himself in the bottom right quadrant, a zone we'll call the inefficient but volume shooter territory. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, yet. Scouts flagged his shooting form before the draft, so the inefficiency isn't a shock. But here's the encouraging part. He's a willing shooter. As Draymond Green once said, to be a great shooter, you first have to be a willing one. Castle is checking that box early. Now here's where it gets interesting. Add in the past rookies of the year, and Castle's inefficiency doesn't look quite so alarming. Look at Luka Doncic, Michael Carter-Williams, even Paolo Banchero. All started out with heavy shot volume and subpar efficiency in year one. That's because high usage rookies are often thrown into the fire, expected to carry offensive loads before they fully adjust to NBA defenses. So Castle's inefficiency? It might not be a red flag, it could be the growing pains of someone the team wants to trust early. Now let's flip the court and talk defense, where Stefan Castle is already making his presence known. In this chart, we're plotting stocks, that's steals plus blocks, against minutes per game. And Castle? He sits comfortably above average in both. He's not just getting minutes, he's making them count defensively. We've already seen flashes. Remember his clamp job on SGA, or the moment he made Steph Curry second guess his handle. Castle isn't just a body on the perimeter. He's a physical, versatile defender who can switch onto bigger wings and hold his ground. In a league that prizes two-way guards, Castle is trending in the right direction, the kind of defender you build a playoff rotation around. Then let's talk about Castle's role as a facilitator. This chart plots assists versus turnovers, a quick way to spot which rookies are not only sharing the balls, but doing it efficiently. Isaiah Collier clearly separates himself, but just behind him is Stefan Castle, holding strong in that upper right quadrant. Yes, the turnovers are high, but that's not unusual for young guards getting real reps. 
What this tells us is that Castle is a willing passer, a playmaker involved in the flow of the game rather than just taking his shots. And the truth is, you want your rookie making mistakes if they come from trying to create plays. That's how elite decision making is built. Castle's assist totals show potential as a secondary or even primary creator down the line, someone who isn't just a scorer or defender, but a connector. Next up, let's talk usage rate, a stat that tells us what percentage of a team's offensive possessions a player ends while on the court through a shot attempt, free throw, or turnover. High usage doesn't always mean high efficiency. It means the offense runs through you and Castle. He's near the top right corner of this plot, combining heavy minutes with a high usage rate. That tells us the Spurs aren't just playing Castle, they're relying on him. Whether it's initiating the offense, driving, or finishing plays, Castle is at the heart of the action. While rookies often take time to earn trust, Castle has been thrown into the fire, and that's where future stars are forged. Next stop, let's evaluate Stefan Castle's impact, not just through highlights, but with player impact estimate, PIE and plus minus. PIE measures how much a player contributes to team success based on box score stats and Castle sits above league average for rookies. That means when you isolate his individual actions, scoring, passing, rebounding, defending, he's doing more good than harm. But on the flip side, his plus minus is still in the red. And that's expected. The Spurs are a young developing team. This doesn't mean Castle is dragging the team down. It just means he's logging big minutes in lineups that are still figuring things out. Finally, let's talk about an underrated signal of offensive IQ, free throws. This chart plots free throws attempted against free throws made, and one name stands in a league of his own, Stefan Castle. No other rookie gets to the line as often, and this tells us two key things. One, he's aggressive, constantly attacking the paint. And two, he's smart. When the jumper's off, Castle doesn't disappear. He puts pressure on the defense, forces contact, and earns his points the hard way. This ability to draw fouls uh, to manufacture points when the offense stalls is a trait we often see in stars like Shea Gilgis Alexander, Trey Young, and James Harden. All crafty, all relentless, and all made their name at the line before their full game matured. Castle isn't just surviving his rookie year. He's showing hints of a player who knows how to manipulate the game, not just play it. Let's move on. Let's pull back and look at the big picture lineup impact. In this chart, each point represents a Spurs lineup. Circles include Stefan Castle, while X's don't. The axes track offensive efficiency and defensive efficiency, and right away, you'll notice something important. In the upper left quadrant, we see lineups that are defensively elite, but not built around scoring. Look closely, three of the top defensive lineups all include Castle. That says a lot about the trust he's earned on that end, being tasked to defend the opponent's best as a rookie. Meanwhile, the upper right quadrant is the Holy Grail lineups that are excelling on both ends of the floor. The standout there, a group featuring Chris Paul, Keldon Johnson, Trey Jones, Julian Champagny, and Wimby. Castle's not in this combo, but the fact that he's sprinkled across both ends of the spectrum speaks volumes. Whether it's anchoring defense or supporting offense, Castle is impacting the game in multiple roles. That flexibility is rare, especially for a rookie. Now for comparison, instead of the eye test, we lean more on the data and pattern. Using NBA API, we extracted the data logs of the players from 2000 up to the present to be able to compare past and present players. When we ran Stefan Castle's rookie stats through Cosine Similarity, a machine learning tool that compares player profiles, three names stood out as eerily similar. 2005 Joe Johnson, 97.41% similarity. This version of Joe was a quiet killer, smooth, efficient, and versatile. Castle mirrors that calm control on offense and solid presence on defense. Nothing forced, just steady impact. 2018 Dennis Schroeder, 96.86% similarity. Peak Schroeder brought speed, playmaking, and relentless rim pressure. Castle shows flashes of that same downhill aggression, especially when he's given freedom to attack. 2001 Stefan Marbury, the wild card, but maybe the most exciting comp. Marbury was a high usage do it all floor general with swagger and command. Castle isn't there yet, but stylistically, it hints at a possible ceiling. Now let's shift gears from who Stefan Castle resembles to how consistent he really is. To measure that, we grabbed all of Castle's rookie games using the NBA API and focused on one simple but telling stat, field goal percentage. How efficiently a player is scoring from the floor 
But rather than just look at averages, we went deeper. We used a rolling five game window to measure standard deviation, which tracks the spread or volatility of his field goal percentage. In simple terms, more spikes means more inconsistency. Smoother lines mean steadier shooting. So how did Castle do? His average rolling FG% percent standard deviation came out to 13.6%, which is fairly modest. He's not wildly up and down, he's not the most stable either, but he holds his own. We also looked at something called the coefficient of variation, or CV. This measures how much his FG% percent varied relative to his average. Think of it as a fairness scale. If your average is low, even small swings can look big. Castle's CV is 36.6%, which tells us he's not overly erratic, but there's definitely room for growth when it comes to tightening up that shot selection or rhythm across games. Then we asked, how many steady streaks did he have? We defined a steady window as any five game stretch where the standard deviation was below 10%, meaning very little fluctuation in performance. Castle had 26 steady windows over the season. That's a good sign. It means over 30% of the time his shooting was calm and consistent. A very solid mark for a rookie. But what really puts this in perspective is when we stack him up against past rookies of the year. Players like Wimby, Paolo, Lamelo, Ja, Luca, and more. On these charts, Castle falls right in the middle of the pack. He's more consistent than Ja Morant, Malcolm Brogdon, and Ben Simmons, but less steady than Wimby, Paolo Banchero, or Andrew Wiggins, who all had tighter control over their shooting performance. So what does this tell us? Castle is not erratic, and that's key. He's showing a foundation of reliable shot making, even if it isn't elite yet. For a rookie handling real minutes and tough matchups, that's encouraging. In summary, Stefan Castle stands out among his rookie class, not just for talent, but for how complete his game already is. He's an aggressive, willing shooter, an above average defender, and someone who can facilitate the offense when needed. Rare traits for a first year guard. When we ran the numbers, Castle's closest statistical twin wasn't Jimmy Butler, but Joe Johnson, calm, efficient, and reliable. And if he continues to develop, the data suggests a potential Stefan Marbury ceiling, a dynamic guard who can run a team. In terms of consistency, Castle's rookie season was modest but stable, holding up well compared to past Rookie of the Year winners like LaMelo Ball and Jay Morant. He's not just promising, he's foundational. And for a rookie, that's exactly where you want to be. Cam rolling, yeah, that's the clip of the night. Top 10 locked in, sports center shine bright. From the arc to the paint, every move so tight. Crowd chant MVP when I step in the light. Caught a body, hit the rim, make a shake, boom. Step back, flex hard, they gon' clear the room. Most of us got them froze, yeah, they stuck like glue. Caught a body, caught a body, what you gonna do? Watch the transition. There's your transition going away from the rim. Now oh, that's tough. Come on. That's tough. Yeah, that's impressive. That's a come on, man. That's a minimum. Well, hey, listen to me. That's